All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. And I am extremely excited because today I have two guests. One should be familiar to you, and that is Dr. A.P. Canavan, who is my partner in crime as we explore the Malazan Book of the Fallen. And we have added uh, another series to our agenda over the next six months, including this month. We are going to be reviewing the books, starting with Night of Knives, the novels of the Malazan Empire by Ian C. Esselmont, who is, I am so excited to say, our guest here today for our discussion of the first book, Night of Knives. So thank you so much, Cameron, for being here today. Oh, well, thank you very much for the invitation. It's uh, great to be here, and I'm very happy to be able to talk about the books. Wonderful. And AP, it's always so great to talk to you. So thank you as well for being here. It's fantastic. And for once, you know, I clean myself up. I put on a waistcoat because I have to try and match the tweed jacket. You are looking more dapper than I could ever pull off, I have to say. I, I love it. That and the ponytail, it's, it's a good look. The, the COVID ponytail will eventually go when, <laughs> when I can go to the barber safely and I can go back to having a normal haircut. I don't know. Maybe you should keep it. I, I, yeah, I maybe like you should it. keep it. I, I think it's yeah. you're working it. Yeah. So, Night of Knives. I just finished reading it this morning. I confess, I'm a little bit of a last minute person sometimes. I absolutely loved this book. This was fantastic. This is my introduction. Now I have read Path to Ascendancy. So it's not your first book, Cameron, that I've, I've read before, but it's the first time I've, be, I've just started reading the novels of the Malazan Empire and as part of my reread of the, the Malazan Book of the Fallen. So this was my introduction to this series and I was absolutely delighted. I had really only just one complaint and that is I thought that the character Lieutenant Chase had a lot of potential. <laughs> an undeveloped character in there. I really thought you could have done more with that fellow. Who knows, maybe, maybe I'll pick him up then. Uh, in <laughs> room room yeah. to grow there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but seriously though, I, I absolutely am deeply impressed with several things here. And this is the non-spoiler, I forgot to say this, but everyone, this is a non-spoiler discussion. And we will be having a spoiler filled discussion, which will appear on AP's channel as usual. It is called A Critical Dragon. And I absolutely encourage you to check out that as well as all of his other content, which is brilliant. So uh, yeah, we're, we're but today this is this is just the non-spoiler discussion. So we're gonna keep away from the the reveals. But I will say in a general way that I loved the POV characters in here. I I thought that was a brilliant choice on your part uh, that allowed the reader in into the mysteries of this. I loved the opening. I was hooked from the very beginning. This is a brilliant opening, which I want to talk about in detail. In fact. I haven't talked about this with AP yet, but in the spoiler video, AP, I think we should do a, a close analysis of a passage, perhaps, if you're if you're game for that. Oh yeah, spring it on me at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> that keeps it that keeps it authentic, don't you think? Authentic and ill prepared. Awesome. <laughs> that is authentic. Huh? <laughs> But I loved it. I mean, there, there are characters I had not yet encountered in the Malazan world. So, and there were some familiar characters. Uh, so really nice combination there. And the atmosphere. One of the things I loved about this is just the atmosphere. The tone of this book uh, is fantastic. AP made a great video about the horror elements in the Malazan world. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but I thought the horror elements were, were more prominent in Night of Knives than in most of the other books in the Malazan world. Would you agree with that? Yes, definitely. Uh, this is the, when uh, AP had mentioned the horror elements to me. And for me, this is the book that comes to mind first for that. Okay. Uh, yeah. And would you say that the rest of the series isn't necessarily as horror oriented as Night of Knives then? Yeah, I think so. Okay. okay. It's much more uh, centered in uh, Knives. Okay, yeah. 
which I really enjoyed. Uh, there was a lot of nice suspense and some, uh, we're gonna mention these later specifically in the spoiler video, but there's some really great humor in here as well. There were some moments I was laughing out loud. Uh, so wonderful combination of, of just suspense and uh, the horror and the humor and the characters. I thought, that, again, those POV characters, just the right choice for us. And the bigger stuff going on. I mean, there's some real fireworks in this book. This is very concentrated. And I know we've used this term before, but convergence, right? This was a, a major convergence event, wasn't it? It's a uh, it's in it, uh, one of the introductions is is that idea of power drawing power. Yeah. So we see convergence, but in many ways it's also um, inevitable, sort of like gravity. You can't avoid it. And then you have these very mortal characters who get caught up in that, uh, which is kind of where the reader is, right? I think so. The the reader, of course, are, is our witness, and uh, is a. Uh, uh, these characters are bringing them along into it uh, to, to all the other aspects that I hope to uh, introduce with, with this particular book. Brilliant. So AP, what are your thoughts uh, in a general way on well, in, in, in a general way, and it was, it was something I had mentioned in, uh, when Cameron and I had spoken before, was, and this isn't a spoiler, it's, it's actually in the title, but this is the, the Night of Knives. This is a story, a fantasy story set over one single sort of period. Yeah. And uh, there are uh, refinements of that idea that we can we can talk about in the, the spoiler section, but I still can't think of another sort of fantasy novel that has as much action, has as much sort of supernatural and, and magical things happening yeah. that has this frantic pace, but then the periods of rest within it everything uh these these amazing events that are all discrete separate events that happen and it it doesn't feel rushed it doesn't feel pressured and there is so much crammed into this uh short novel and to my mind i cannot think of another comparable novel out there that the very first time i read this book and it was long before i had met cameron that I had actually turned to, uh, I had messaged Stephen Erickson and went, holy shit, how did he do this? I, I was so impressed with it, so blown away by it because it is, I, I think, a phenomenal achievement to balance all of those different things, like the, the point of view, the introduction of the world to a reader in a way that is interesting and they have enough to hold on to, but is still new and is revealing new things. And it is a very, in, in some respects, for, for readers who have not read, uh, say, Erickson's Malazan Book of the Fallen mm. or um, Cameron's other books in the novels of the Malazan Empire, there's, this is a new fantasy world that doesn't fit with a lot of the established tropes or a lot of the standard fantasy settings that we've become so used to. Yeah. that this is a very uh, innovative setting. And to get all of that across in such a tightly constructed, well-paced novel, uh, I, I am immensely impressed by it. I agree. Yeah. That's well, I hope so. I hope that I managed. Um, it, it was conceived of as, as an introduction. That was the whole point for it. Uh, it was meant to... Uh, bring readers who are uh, unfamiliar with the world into it and show um, aspects drawn from standard other uh, fantasy books like the, um, uh, the, the callow adventurer or the uh, grizzled veteran. And so I wanted to bring in elements that were familiar and then show how they are being treated or will be treated in, in our world. Now, speaking of introductions to the Malazan world, a question I wanted to ask you without getting into specifics uh, of any of the series, as I was reading Path to Ascendancy, one of your other series in the Malazan world, in fact, it is a, well, it's a trilogy, right? That, that takes place before 
the novels of the Malazan Empire before the Malazan Book of the Fallen. And as I was reading this for the first time, the idea uh, occurred to me that wouldn't this be a great introduction to the Malazan world? And this is something that my viewers ask me a lot, actually several uh, viewers have asked, could you please make a video about the reading order for the, all the books in the Malazan world? Uh, and I have done my best to answer that question. Usually my standard answer is from what I've read. And so this is why you're here and I wanna ask you, I have read that you and Steven Erickson uh, have basically said, well, just read them in publication order. That's the, the easiest thing to do. But as I was reading Path to Ascendancy, I thought, I think this is, would be one path, at least one uh, way into the world, especially for readers who might feel a bit daunted by the epicness and the, the size and just the way um, Gardens of the Moon just kind of throws you in, in medias race. And I like that, so I don't have a problem with that, but I think some readers might feel like, what, what's going on here? Whereas I felt like Dancer's Lament was a nice, uh, something that you know readers could get a grip on, on the world first. And it's a great story. It's a, it's a more concentrated story. So what, what's your opinion uh, on the reading order? If you could help our viewers with that. <laughs> yeah, um, chronologically, um... Steve's other Carcanus material aside, uh, it's you know it's Knight of Knives is the the, 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 the beginning the the entree, uh, but yeah. uh, I'm not I don't write of course as Steve writes we write differently yes and and so there are some who would say well we want to so you want to start with Steve's works you know the greater the larger body, um, but if someone's like you said uh, daunted and looking for uh, a piece that is uh, manageable and is um, actually built to try and help you in and be an introduction to the world, yeah. uh, knives would serve very well in, in that regard. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, because it does take place before Gardens of the Moon, obviously, or uh, I know that some of the other books chronologically in the Malazan Book of Fallen start before <laughs> Gardens of the Moon as well, but this starts before, is that true? Any of them chronologically? Is that I believe true? so, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, if I could chime in here, I think the, the path to ascendancy novels are an excellent entry point uh, yeah. as well for, for someone who wanted to get into the Malazan world, who, who wanted right. to experience um, this fantastic creation. The path to ascendancy novels, I think, are a, a wonderful entry point because Cameron starts off, uh, again, it's, it's a much more focalized story um yes it's a trilogy which you know fantasy fantasy readers are well you know i can i can handle a trilogy there's been yeah. a few of those around you know they're they're used to that <laughs> um and it 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 gives them that the taste of the malazan world it gives them the insight into you know some of the complexity uh some of the depth of the world the feeling of of something so well developed Yes. that it could be a brilliant entry point and grounding point if they wanted to leap into a slightly more complex uh, entry point. I think Knight of Knives works perfectly before any of the others um, because, again, it is, it is designed as an entry point. It is designed as this brilliant encapsulated short snapshot, this dose of concentrated malazanness. Yeah. But you know, the, the reader gets hit with. Um, they could start with Gardens of the Moon. And to be perfectly honest, there, there are so many different, people get very hung up on what is the correct order or what is the best order. And no matter what order you read them in, that's going to be the order for you. It's, you can try and second guess whether you would have, it would have been easier a different way, but that's going to depend on the type of reader you are. Yeah. on the type of reading that you've done beforehand. So uh, for me, uh, I, I see no problem with, with either starting with the past, uh, Path to Ascendancy and Dancer's Lament or Night of Knives or Gardens of the Moon. And, you know, just enjoy the fact that there are these brilliant novels and yeah. you know, take your time, read them all. There's, there's no rush. And, and this is all to take nothing away from, from Steve's uh, and 
as, as entry points. Um, I, I think that that a reader can come to the world and, and uh, we hope we managed each one to be stand enough alone to be a satisfying meal, so to speak. Uh, and, and you don't feel that you've been cheated in any way. And so uh, I think Stephen, I would like the idea that you could start almost anywhere because that fits with our critique of knowledge that like no one really knows everything that's going on. So. <laughs> I love and, that. Go ahead, AP. I was about to say, and this is, it's one of the interesting things going through, uh, doing this read along with, with Philip here, that looking at each of these novels, each of the, the novels act as a story in and of themselves pretty much. And you can read them as a satisfying, if it, it could be difficult sometimes getting into them because you don't have that grounding in the setting, but they work as self-contained stories. Um, and it is, it's a very impressive feat. But also, I think this is one of the things that certain readers have had problems with because they're used to when there is a series, uh, particularly one that is not just a trilogy, but anytime that there's a series of books, that there has to be a very strong thread of continuing narrative and continuing story all the way through that it is one story that they are following. And because of this quite deliberate stylistic choice of having self-contained narratives, that doesn't necessarily fit with that approach. And so there, there have been people saying, but how does this book connect to that one? And you go, they're in the same world, they're in the same series, there's similar themes explored and you know some of the characters move around. Yeah, so in fact, AP recently made a great video on the date in the prologue <laughs> of Memories of Ice, uh, which is, what is it, AP, 299,300, whatever, <laughs> whatever it was, before Burns Sleep, a very precise date. And AP was conjecturing that maybe, just maybe, Steven Erickson was having a, you know, a bit of a laugh here by you know pulling the readers like a little bit with that that precision you know the way professor dry as dust would get out his uh chalk and write all these things on the chalkboard and, and give a nice long lecture which students are struggling to stay awake through that kind of tone and i loved stephen erickson's reply to that video as well and one thing i'm, I'm a little slow catching on to some of these things but it is it has become clear to me that it's okay in the Malazan world if everything doesn't line up exactly chronologically. It's okay if there are contradictions. And so that's something I, I would love for you to talk about is, are there characters that you have a different take on from Steven Erickson's take? And how, how do you feel about this, um, I don't know quite how to put it, but uh, this comfort with uh, having uh, contrasting um, narratives at times, or no official version, perhaps. Let's let's put it that way. Uh, yes, I mean that's you know, almost deliberate. Uh, and the that the through line for the books is the world. That's the only through line. Um, there's no one hero that we are following through book after book till their uh, resolution. Um, and even today in our uh, modern technological world, there are different versions of things that happened. Yes. There's no one official version um, on, on any event. The, uh, of course, the classic thing is one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist, uh, yep. things, things like that. Uh, so to, to say that things should make sense in, in a, <laughs> a world without even instant communication, is really a stretch. <laughs> yeah, and that is something that I, from the very first video that I made, and I, I read the Malazan Book of the Fallen first. By the way, I, I did not know anyone who had read it. I had no one to talk to, but that is one of the things I observed. And I, the way I put it in that very first video was just, it's not, this is brilliant. The characters are vivid and interesting, but it's not character driven. Uh, the characters aren't the thing driving the narrative here. And that is something I think it's important to get across to new 
readers to any of the books in the Malazan world that it's not um, it's not your traditional fantasy where you have a hero or a group of friends or whatever who are going to save the day, who are going to save the world. Uh, it's it's a very different, and I think in in some sense truer reflection of our place in the universe. And I like that. I, and it has grown on me as I've read more and more of the series and it's become clearer to me that that's where you guys are coming from. Is it because partly, I, I know it was probably a deliberate decision on your part, but it, was it because also you, this was something you gamed in the beginning that this is how it sort of organically evolved that way to have this <laughs> beautiful cast of characters in this world. It, it may have uh, come out of our gaming um, in that it, it wasn't goal driven. You know, it wasn't teleological. Uh, we right. just wanted to explore the world. And, it's, and I'm, I'm, I want to see, you know, it is character driven in that character is central. Yes. Right? I don't want people to, to mistake that. I agree. Uh, yeah. We're, we're with the characters and we're following their characters' development. Uh, but the thing is that their actions uh, are very unlikely to change the world. Right. As much as we try. And so one of the big questions that's being uh, examined here is striving. You know, why, why struggle? Why, what, what, what's the point of what you're trying to do? Ah. So uh, it's, and that's a character question. Yes. And the and characters respond in different ways. Yes, so, yes, brilliant. And that overarching theme of empathy and compassion, of course, is something we see frequently being an answer to that question. How do you respond? And it may not be that you change the world, but you most certainly can change the lives around you in the process. And you certainly see that in the series. I mean, characters' choices have repercussions for other characters. Um, so uh, you you see some moments of connection in Night of Knives that are are lovely amidst all this horror and terror and and the fireworks and everything else. So we will talk about that more specifically when we do the spoiler talk. Any yeah. other points? Any well, it was just just to add to to Cameron's point there. Yeah. Um, character is at the heart of everything in all of the different Malazan books. Yeah. Um, character is very much the absolute center of what is going on. The world is a, cont a continuity that connects a lot of the different books. Well, this would be how I would view it. Uh, the world is this uh, point of continuity between everything. And I think one of the big differences between uh, Cameron's work and a lot, of, uh, a lot of other fantasy that say that we're more used to is we got very used to fantasy being uh, story-driven. And by story-driven, I mean a chronological sequence of events that were predetermined from the beginning, that here's the beginning, the middle, and the end, that there is a very small group of characters and we're going to follow them on this one trajectory through the narrative. Right. And, and that is it. And even in grand series like uh, The Wheel of Time, you right. have, here are your small cast of characters and this epic is going to follow them from point A to point Z. And you know from the very beginning you're going to end up at point Z and it's, these are the friends that we make along the way kind of Yep. These are the obstacles they are going to face. These are the obstacles they're going to overcome. What I think the Malazan books do, uh, and it's what intrigues me so much about them as fantasy works, is they take that much more realistic. Here are these characters, and this is what is going on. And they don't know how it's going to end up. And yeah. obviously, Cameron knows... Uh, how the book is going to end up. He, he knows how the story is going to end. But me as a reader, I'm in that position with the characters. Yeah. I'm grounded in their perspective. I'm grounded in that subjectivity of them fighting through what is happening without this grand end goal that they all kind of go, well, yes, I am the chosen one and here's my magic sword and I will be <laughs> slaying that Dark Lord sometime around Tuesday. Um, <laughs> That this yeah. this is what grips me so much about um, the Malazan writing is that it never feels uh, story driven or story constrained 
It is an exploration of events that actually occurred to these fictional characters on a fictional world. Yeah, that's a great way to put it, AP. Thank you. Yeah. And I would point out that you actually get to go along with the story before the rest of us do, as the advanced reader, at least. So (laughs) you may not know before Cameron knows, but you know before the rest of us. So... (laughs) It, it is both a blessing and a curse, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, he knows that um, at any point, um, anyone could fail. Uh, and uh, this is some, that's a suspense that we like to try and maintain. Uh, and um, so what is it an exploration of it? It's not um, a, a revealing um, of a, a predetermined story, story constrained ending. Right. Uh, it's more, to, to use the, the Hemingway's uh, phrase, it's more an examination of grace under pressure. Hmm. How do you, how are these people responding to the predicaments, to the, the, the stresses that are being there being, uh, placed, that's being placed upon them? I think that's a wonderful description of Night of Knives. It's a, a perfect description. Uh, as well as what AP said earlier about it being what we a concentrated dose of malazinness, I think. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Um, but yes, uh, you know, you see how, did it, again, without getting into specifics, but you look at these POV characters, particularly, and how they respond to these events, and you're, you're almost biting your nails along with them, and there's perseverance in here. Uh, that is quite admirable, I must say. I, I love that aspect of this. The, the sheer perseverance of the characters in here is, is uh, something that I certainly found myself admiring. So wonderful. What else would we like to discuss in a non-spoilery way before we get into the spoilers? Um, well, I'm, I'm happy enough to, to move on to a more sort of spoiler focus so that we don't have to dance around issues yes yeah that's the tough part uh when we're, we're talking the non-spoilers we have to be careful uh, but um is there anything else cameron that you would want uh your potential readers to know talking to somebody who has not read uh the novels of the malazan empire yet or perhaps path to ascendancy anything that we have missed that uh we can tell a potential reader uh, because I have to say that I, I loved this book. I'm excited to continue with the rest of the series, the, the six books. Uh, I'm in, enjoying where it's going. And for any potential readers who have read the Malazan Book of the Fallen, uh, but have not yet read the novels of the Malazan Empire, th- these books take you in places that uh, you will want to go. Um, it is not I I'm, actually would love it if you talk about this a bit. Um, so in what senses are these completely independent stories? And in what senses are these complementary to the, the Malazan Book of the Fallen? Um, so perhaps if you had any thoughts on those lines. Um, hmm. uh, they are separate. Um, they're not intended to be uh, deliberately complementary. Right. Uh, there were no particular holes that they're sort of meant to plug. Um, it's uh, more um, if if something happens to be able to answer a certain question, then then that's just a a, a great plus. Okay. Um, it's more um, again our our treatments of how we play with point of view. It's just it's another point of view on this world. Like Steve has his, and this is mine. Yeah. Uh, so they are complementary, but they're sometimes contradictory, uh, and. Um, on a more general intro, I would say, um, like we had said, those who are you know, eyeing the, the world and wondering about it, they can, I hope, uh, see not just <clears throat> um, the, the physical setting, uh, but an introduction to the, the depth of the history, yeah. uh, how things have consequences that reverberate through uh, uh, years and, and centuries, uh, and also an introduction to the magic, which is pervasive. Uh, yes, and, and I want people to come away from it with a, a feel for how the magic works in the world as well. Brilliant, yeah. But, but before we, went, I would like to to use my critic card to interject here to object to how Cameron has just phrased something. I I think they are complementary in that both the Malazan Book of the Fallen, the novels of the Malazan Empire, 
complement one another. They work well together. They, they, they are part of this wonderful uh, tapestry of narrative that has been created. What I don't think is that either series is dependent on the other. And I th- just to clear that up, as a critic, to go, no, the author is obviously wrong because I'm a critic and I'm right. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but I, that would be the the only thing that I would add to that is I, I think they are an, an awesome complement to each other that they work as, I, I, I've made this analogy before about a lot of the Malazan world being like World War II. And if you can imagine sitting down and someone has given you, here's this section or uh, a story about uh, the, the race to Berlin and it's being told from uh, the, the Western Allies perspective. And then someone else goes, well, here's a book about the race to Berlin from the Russian perspective. Mm. And then someone else says, well, here's a story about being in Berlin while the race yeah. to Berlin was going on. Yeah. And yeah. That all of these different perspectives, I think, complement one another. They expand our awareness, um, our appreciation of the depth and the complexity, but they are not they are not dependent on one another. You don't need to have read one in order to have read the other. That would be the the only thing that I would say that yes, as a critic, I am clearly I right. Hope, I hope that that's the case. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. Wasn't it Oscar Wilde, AP, who said the critic is more important than the artist? Is that- <laughs> <laughs> and of course, well, being being Irish, never heard. The author's uh, dead, apparently. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I I, I do find uh, I, that I agree with what AP was saying, though, that these are very much complementary, that there are also, by the way, characters who do appear in both series, uh, although you tend to concentrate on a different set or different sets, let's say, of characters than what you would see in, in the Malazan Book of the Fallen. So. Um, but I'm I'm loving getting to know them the 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 set that uh, you are concentrating on so far so and I'm I'm really looking forward to getting further into the novels of the Malazan Empire so I thank you so much any any final thoughts before we uh, stop the non spoiler discussion um, no I would say uh, thank you uh, it's been great and uh, I'm looking forward to um, dropping some spoilers. Awesome. Yeah, me too. Thanks, AP. And always a pleasure, Philip. Same for me. Always a pleasure. Uh, And we're going to have some fun talking some spoilers. So please do come to A Critical Dragon. And the uh, video will be out a couple days probably after this. Um, So we look forward to seeing you there. And thank you so much for watching.